Today we're going to be taking a look at the eTrailer 4500 watt portable generator, part number 333-0005. When choosing a generator, you'll want one that meets your electrical demands. Some things to consider are your starting watts and your running watts. Starting watts is power that your device or appliance needs when first turning it on, and running watts is power required to keep that device on. Some larger appliances, like your air conditioner, refrigerator, and washer and dryers require up to two to three times more starting watts than running watts to turn on. This means that the wattage will spike when powering your device on and then drop to a lower wattage while running. One example would be when you're at home and you turn on the vacuum cleaner and your lights dim. Another way to think about it is water pressure. When you're in the shower and somebody turns on the sink or flushes the toilet, the water pressure drops. Another thing to consider is how many different devices or appliances you'll be running simultaneously. For example, your air conditioner, refrigerator, microwave, coffee pot, TV, radio, and all of your lights. It all adds up. You'll want to be sure your generator can handle the combined wattage. This e-trailer generator is going to be great for the campsite, the job site, and emergency situations. It's going to be ideal to use it with your RV, camper, power tools, or any other electrical devices or appliances. While it does run on regular gasoline like most generators, one of its best features is its compatibility with propane, so it's a dual fuel system. Being able to run on propane can be highly beneficial. For one, it has a longer shelf life than gasoline, which degrades over time. It won't be contaminated or full of carbon deposits if not regularly used. So for example, if you're someone who doesn't camp as frequently, you don't have to worry about the propane going bad. Another thing to consider is when a catastrophe strikes. Things like electrical outages, ice storms, and hurricanes. Propane is easier to get a hold of, and it's available when gas pumps aren't. One thing to keep in mind, when running your generator on propane, it may not be as efficient in sub-zero temperatures. Lastly, propane is environmental friendly. It's clean burning, and produces a low amount of carbon monoxide compared to other fuels. While you may like one fuel source more than the other, the nice thing is you get both options if the other is not available. When using your generator and choosing your fuel source, one thing to keep in mind is that the onboard gas tank holds five gallons, whereas if you were to use the propane, you determine the tank size. It's a seven horsepower, four stroke engine that features an electric start, and a manual pull start. On board, it features two 120 volt, 20 amp common household outlets, 120 volt, 30 amp RV outlet, and 120 volt, 30 amp twist lock outlet. All outlets are fuse protected and the reset switches are located here and here. It also has a three in one data miner. It's gonna show us our volts, our frequency, and our hours of use. Here we have the selector switch for our gasoline and propane. It's easy to operate and it's easy to read. Here we have the LPG inlet for our propane and the regulator and hose is included. Surrounding the engine and fuel tank is a steel tubular frame. This is gonna give it strength and durability. Integrated within the engine and frame are four rubber isolators. This is gonna help cut down on vibration and noise when the engine is running. It includes rubber coated wheels and a handle with a pad for easy toting. The rubber feet on the bottom of the frame are gonna help stabilize our generator when parked. This too is also gonna cut down on vibration. The exhaust features a spark arrestor. This is gonna prevent any flammable debris from exiting the generator. Now that we've got all the features, I'll go ahead and show you how to get it set up. I've already gone ahead and removed it from the box, as you can see. The next step is to remove the shipping brackets underneath of the generator, and this has to be done before you add any gasoline or oil. So what we can do is grab the handle, and we're gonna turn it up and rest it on its side. So here on the underside of the generator, the shipping brackets are red. It does include the wrenches to remove these. There's a nut on the back side. We'll just line it up, get them loose, and take them off. Okay. 
Now you can discard those brackets, we will not be needing them, and we're ready to turn the generator back over. Our next step is to connect our battery. We can push the wire through our cover, remove that hardware, and then on our battery, we can remove that protective cover, and we'll just line it up, put our hardware back in place. Once we've got it nice and secure, take our cover and put it over the top. Next, let's fill the oil. The oil filler cap is located right here to the left of the battery. Let's take that out. I'd like to point out that it also doubles as a dipstick. We can take our included funnel, push that in, and pour in our included oil. Once it's filled up, we can just use a little cloth, clean up any oil that we may have spilled, and put our cap back on. Now, if you're using gasoline, now is the time to fill it up. It takes five gallons of regular unleaded gasoline. We'll take off our cap and begin fueling up. Once we're full, we put our cap back on. Once you've got it all fueled up, you're ready to go. If you'll be using propane, you'll need a propane tank, and you'll also need to connect your hose and regulator. The hose connects right here on your generator. You'll need to provide your own wrench to tighten it down. The regulator connects to your tank. And we can just tighten that down by the large knob with our hand. Once you figure out which source you're going to use, you'll just need to select it. Since we'll be operating propane first, we'll turn it to propane, and we'll want to make sure our tank is also open. From there, the rest of the startup procedure is the same, whether you're using gasoline or propane. For starting, you want to set your choke to the starting position, then we can just hold down our start button until the engine gets started. After that, we'll want to turn our choke to the run position. If it seems like it wants to start, you can just go ahead and change the choke to the run position and then try again, it should start right up. Once the light turns green, we're ready to plug in. With my generator running, I can operate my slide out, my lights, my microwave, and most importantly, my air conditioning. Here I am inside my camper. My generator is right outside and I'm averaging about 66 decibels. Here outside next to the generator, I'm averaging about 88 decibels. To kill the engine, you can turn it to the off position. Now let's try it with gasoline. So then we'll just repeat our steps. With it running on gasoline, our decibels go up to 89. To perform some regular maintenance, I like to point out that your air filter is located on this side next to your pull cord. To remove it, you'll need to take off the cover first. There is a clip on both the top and bottom. Take those off, and then you have access to the actual filter. Once you've cleaned it, you can just reverse your steps. The spark plug is located on the back side of the generator. You can simply remove the spark plug wire and the tool is included to remove it and install it. You get a socket and a rod. When you're done reinstalling your spark plug, you can then just reconnect your wire. And that's gonna complete our look at the eTrailer 4500 watt portable generator, part number 333-0005.